Not all trash cans are created equal. As you can see when you're pressing the pedal, the slow closing lid mechanism gives this trash can a premium feel. In this video, we're gonna study this mechanism right here. So we have a $100 trash can versus a $60 trash can, and they're of a comparable size and material, and the main difference seems to be this control smooth opening of the lid. This one's floppy over here, as you saw in the video before, and this one's nice and controlled. And I wanted to know what justifies this price increment of $40. And why do I want to know this? Because I want to develop premium products as a mechanical design engineer. Now, if I can understand what's the mechanism that's driving this premium feel of the product, I can then implement it in my future inventions and creations. I'm gonna give you the answer right away because we're all very busy, and then I'm gonna explain how it all works. The answer is that it has a hydraulic linear damper, and we have the hydraulic linear damper here. It's a hardware, off-the-shelf hardware that you can find on websites like McMaster. Not exactly the same one, but uh, in essence, it is a, a linear speed limiter or damper. And you can find it online. So the essence is the the off-the-shelf hardware is the difference, the main difference between these two trash cans. Now let's dive in and do a teardown, take a closer look. So as soon as you open the lid, you have a cam-shaped object in red. If you don't know what a cam is, uh, look it up on YouTube. And then we have the hydraulic linear damper, and it's responsible for damping the motion in, in linear, smooth fashion. So you see the dotted lines here because it's hidden. And at when the, the cam, the lid moves down, the cam is going to move and it's going to uh, come in contact with this surface. Well, it's coming in contact right now, but it's going to rotate, come in contact and push this down. And it's going to travel inside. So now we're going to take a look at the hydraulic linear damper after the tear down. Took off the lid, zoomed in, here's the linear damper. Then we popped it off. Here it is, and I tore down the linear damper on the inside. Here I'm going to show you a video of how I did that. Linear damper, and find out what's really inside here. Check this out. use the Dremel as you saw in the shop to open the linear damper and do a tear down. I know you see a lot of arrows it may seem confusing but I'm gonna simplify this for you. First uh, show you the big picture the cam over here is coming in contact with this face the force is going to travel all the way down onto this face which is the face of the valve. So this is a valve which is the key part of this mechanism we can actually ignore the top cover. We can ignore the stabilizer. I want to make you aware this is a hydro hydraulic linear damper, so hydro water. Uh, there's oil in it. So there's the oil here. Uh, there's a what you call a return spring because this spring is actually not strong enough to hold the lid up because if it were, the trash can would be open at all times and the room would smell really bad. So they designed it on purpose. So this spring is not very strong, at least not strong enough to hold the lid up. The sole purpose of this spring is like the name says, is a return spring. So the spring will hold it back to this um, original position, the starting position. One thing that I want you to understand that the focus of this mechanism, we're inching closer, is this valve over here. And in CAD, it's gonna look beautiful when I show you the model. But the key geometry is that the valve, if you look at it from the bottom, so if you have a little eye here, and look at it from the bottom, it's gonna have big cutouts that you see there in red. But if you look at it from the top, if you have an eye here, you have little channels, I'm gonna bring you over here, there are little channels on the edges. And these channels are where the oil is going to travel through. Now keep that in the back of your mind. So I'm going to explain how the mechanism works now. 
We're going to ignore the spring and the top cover. So what was here, we're going to ignore it. We're going to ignore the spring. Here we have the, the face that's coming in contact with the cam. The force is going to travel up to this face. And this face is going to come in contact with the oil. The little drops there, that's the oil. Keep in mind that this valve has an O-ring that can move vertically in the Y direction. So this O-ring is kind of loose in there. It'll go like this, up, down, up, down. And there's this neck area, if you, if you will. But the, the O-ring is free to move. And this movement is key in the mechanism. Now I'm going to show you in CAD in a second. But let's say, for instance, we got to keep in mind the, the gaps. Bottom has uh, large gaps and the top view has little gaps. If we press down, so apply a force here, that's when the lid is closing. The lid is coming down and it's coming in contact with this face and it's pushing down. What's happening is like I showed you before, the O-ring is going to go from here up. Okay, so it's in this configuration. And when that happens, now this is probably the most important part of the video here. The oil can easily travel up because there's this big holes here, right? The oil is eat, no problem, but then it encounters the O-ring and the O-ring is blocking almost everything except for these little tiny channels. And then when the oil struggles to go through here, that's when the damping occurs. So if we look at the, the other way, when this is moving up, when the when the lid is lifted by someone, they're about to throw trash inside the trash can. Uh, the neck or this area has no problem moving up. Why, you may ask? Because the O-ring, it came from this configuration here. Imagine it's, this is all being pulled up. We pull this up. And given that it's uh, connected, like I mentioned before, this is going to move up and the oil can easily travel through the large holes. Now you can say all of what I, I just explained into this terminology that's more physics oriented. Now we're going to dive into CAD and I'll show you exactly how this works. Here we have a simplified version of the hydraulic linear damper. Uh, this assembly, you're going to have to imagine a couple of things. So I'm going to walk you through it so I don't lose you. Okay. So this is the, the barrel, the oil barrel. There used to be a spring here, which we're not going to show because this is the simplified version of the mechanism. So imagine there's oil down here at the bottom, lots of very viscous oil. And we have the cam up here and the lid is going to close. Okay. So there's going to be a force applied on this surface, a normal force, which is going to travel all the way down to this face right here. And this face is going to come in contact with the oil that was down here. Okay. So as we move, we apply the force and it moves down. Watch what happened to the O-ring. Did you see that? The O-ring stuck to the top face. Let's do that again. Put a force, it moves down, bam. And the O-ring comes in contact. Why is that important? Because the oil is going to travel upwards. It's going to be blocked by the O-ring, as you can see, and it's going to really struggle to get through the orifice right there. And that's what's causing the dampening. Okay, so it's going to really struggle and slow it down. And that's what gives it that control, nice and smooth way on the way down for the lid. Very smooth. And then the spring is all compressed. As soon as we open the lid, this will come right back up because the spring will be pushing upwards. And also note in my sketches and on the iPad before, these holes are a lot bigger in the bottom. So the oil that needs to travel, that was, let's, let's do, let's, let me show you again. We open the lid and this will want to move up because the spring that's down here will be pushing on this face. So I'll be moving it up. And all the oil that was up here will be traveling through these big holes that we have here in the bottom. So the O-ring is not going to be getting in the way. And that's how this mechanism works. Now I'm going to teach you this very handy capability called physical dynamics, which is under the move component. So if you type in move component, it'll bring you here and then physical dynamic, these components, and then you'll be able to do what I'm showing you right now, which I have no mates at all. And it's a pretty cool feature. 
how do I remember? This is something interesting I want to share with my audience. How do I remember all these things? I've taken a lot of SolarWorks training and a lot of videos online I watched. I have over a thousand flashcards that I've stored in my Google Drive, which I would like to share with you if you're interested. Just send me a message on LinkedIn. And I don't remember the names of all the features and all the capabilities that this wonderful software called SolarWorks offers. But I do have these flashcards, and sometimes I use keywords to get to the feature names that I need. Okay, so what I did here is I knew that one time I watched a video on YouTube with a guy with a box. Let me know if you watch this video too. And he was getting the box to bang on the lid and throwing it inside uh, the other box, the red box. And he had no mates. And all I remember, I started looking up, searching for different keywords, and I typed in box, I typed in without. And that's how I came across this flashcard that I stored here. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to flip through 400 flashcards. Uh, this is my method of remembering the features that SolarWorks offers. What's your method? This is Rafael Testai. Until next time. This video belongs to a playlist called the Mental Mechanism Library, in which we're going to study products all around us, figure out how they work internally, and save their mechanisms in our Mental Mechanism Library. This is going to make you a better mechanical design engineer.